Hello viewers. In this video, we are going to learn about annotations. When you construct the data visualization, it is often necessary to make annotations to the data displayed. Annotations are nothing but the metadata for the plot. They provide additional contextual information to the plot such as chart title, axis labels, text labels to the graph, legends, axis tick mark labels and their placements and colors in the plot. So we are going to start by loading the tidyverse and the gapmind library. We are going to work on a gapminder data set. Displaying the data. <coughs> we are going to start by adding annotations to the scatter plot. We will first make the scatter plot between population and GDP per capita with population map to x axis and GDP per capita map to y axis. We are going to annotate the entire scatter plot. So, to keep the things simple, we will filter out the observations for the year 2007. So, <clears throat> let's start building the <clears throat> data pipeline. Gapminder data and we will filter out year equal to equal to 2007 and we will only keep the countries with GDP per capita of more than 10,000. So GDP, I'm sorry, GDP per cap more than 10,000 okay right and <clears throat> ggplot function aesthetic will be on x-axis population on y-axis will be gdp per capita geom Point. Yeah, so let's first execute this. Yeah, we got the scatter plot. Now, what we want to do is so, what we are going to do now is annotate this entire scatter plot. So, the main tool for annotation we are going to use is geom text. So, geom text. So let me first write this function geom text. So what geom text <coughs> does is it adds the labels from the data to the chart. Okay. Now what we want to indicate on the chart is the country. For so for each point on the scatter plot, we want to annotate that point with the country. So <coughs> geom text will map the character variable that is country from the data set to the aesthetic label okay so we are going to make an aesthetic label here aesthetic label equal to we want to map the variable country country from the data set right and the size of the annotation we will keep it as three okay so let's see what we get now we got the <clears throat> now we got the annotation for the entire plot but you can see that the labels are overlapping and you can hardly read out the labels here some of the labels for example here in this chunk you can't read out at all so to automatically adjust the point labels so that they don't overlap on each other we can use geom text repel function but in order to use geom text repel function you will have to first load ggrepl package so if you have not installed this package then please do install ggrepl package and then call that package onto your current r session so i'm going to start <coughs> by 
calling the ggripple package on the in this R session and we will now use this pipeline that we have created but instead of geom text I will use geom text underscore repel function and the arguments of the functions will be the same because we want to map the country to each and every point in the scatter plot so this will aesthetic level aesthetic layer will going to remain the same right so let's execute this now you can see that the graph is more readable fine Good. Now we can read the labels, but labeling every point, we have labeled every point in the chart, but does it going to make any sense in this example? I don't think so. Uh, it makes any sense to label each and every point in the data. And it's also not conveying us any useful information. But labeling only outlier will tremendously help us in highlighting the outliers from this scatter plot one outlier we can see over here is united states which has the highest population among the countries that we have filtered out so we will annotate this outlier and we will delete the annotations for rest of the data okay so that's what we are going to do now so let me first copy this code. Let me first copy this. Yeah. So remember in the previous two graphs, ggplot function plots the annotations automatically. But now we have to do some manual work. If you want to explicitly annotate the outlier, then we need to do it manually and for that to manually add annotation we will use annotate function so annotate annotate function and in this function we will have to specify x and y coordinates and label the data so it may require some tweaking to get the labels position just right just at the right place around the outlier point so as i can see here in the plot the the y-axis the gdp per capita for the us is around 42,000. so y-axis is 40 40 around 44 42,000, and x-axis the population is around 300 millions so let's start building the annotate function so you will have to specify the name of the geometric object for the annotation now in this case we will use text as a geometric object because we want to label the data right and then we will specify the x and y coordinates so x coordinate will be around 2.7 times 10 to the power of 8 that will give you give us the population of around 270 million and y axis is GDP per capita, which is around 44,000 for the US. Label in this case will be United States. Okay. And size of the label will be three. So let's so let's execute this. Now you can see the we could we could able to label the outlier united states right okay now changing the legend of the title that's what will be our next point of discussion now we can add below annotations to the chart we can add labels i'm sorry we can add legends we can add access title and we can add chart title all the three things we are going to see now so all these three annotations the chart title the access title and legends 
can be easily included in the plot using labs function, labs helper function, right? So let's start with the legend. So let's introduce the legend in our scatter plot. So we will use the GDP per capita values for ES 2002 and 2007 and we will separate them out in the scatter plot using color aesthetic. Okay, so let me first let me first copy this code. I don't know whether this code will be useful. So here for the filtering, I am going to use percent in percent operator to select the ES 2002 and 2007. So percent in percent C 2002 and 2007 and then GDP per capita value will be more than 10,000 all the countries. So, so this will remain the same. Then ggplot, population on x-axis, GDP per capita on y-axis and here we are going to use a color aesthetic, color factor here. So this will going to give us the legend now. And now instead of geom point, we will use geom jitter. with alpha value 0.5 so that will take care of overplotting geom jitter and we will use alpha equal to 0.5 and yeah so that's it so let's let's first execute this Right, so we got the legend here. Factor year is the legend name, legend title. Now we want to change this legend title. So in order to change the legend title now, we will use labs helper function. So let's use the labs helper function plus labs. Now in this labs function, we can set the values to fill size and color aesthetic. So in our plot, we have used color aesthetics. So labs color equal to the new, new label description, the new label description that, that we want to give. So let's say survey year is our new label description. Okay, so let me execute this. Now you can see that the 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 legend name the legend title is changed to survey underscore year now you can also change the legend titles of multiple legends at the same time for example if we introduce another size aesthetic to the scatter plot so let me let me use size aesthetic aesthetic size equal to GDP per cap okay and alpha so I'm introducing another aesthetic I'm introducing uh, the size aesthetic here so let's execute this yeah so you can see that now we got two legends survey year and GDP per cap now I want to change this GDP per cap legend name so I will use the size aesthetic here. So size, remember earlier we used color aesthetic. Now we are going to use size aesthetic. And what is the new name of the label we are going to give is, let's say per capita GDP. So let's execute this. Now you can see that this per capita GDP, this legend name is also changed. Okay. Now how can we change the axis labels? If I want to change these axis labels, how I can do that? Again, 
is the same function that we are going to use. We are going to use the labs helper function. This function is really very useful and flexible. So labs helper function. Now here we are going to change the access titles by using name value pair. Name value pair means I am going to simply call x as a x axis and I am going to write the new label description. So for the x axis I will write country population. Suppose country population and y axis we will write per capita GDP. Okay, so let's execute. Now we can see that this axis labels are also changed. You can also change the axis labels using xlab and ylab functions. So these are special lab functions only to change the x and y axis level. So for example, x lab country population and y lab per capita GDP. So this should also work. And I have commented this code. Okay. So let's execute. You can see that the the axis names are also changed using xlab and ylab function. So either you can use the labs function or you can use the the special xlab and ylab functions to change the axis labels. Okay, so let me delete this and let me keep the ylab function. Okay, now we want to add the plot title. So this plot doesn't have any title, we want to add it. How we can able to do that? Again, labs function. So in the labs function, I am going to call title aesthetic and here I am going to write the title name. Title name is GDP per capita versus country population. Okay, so let me skip this and see the title chart here. Okay, so with the help of labs function, we could able to change the legend title we could able to change the x-axis and y-axis title and we could add the title to the entire plot entire graph right okay now we can change the tick spacing for x and y-axis now suppose for example for y-axis you can see the difference now for example for y-axis you can see the difference between the two consecutive tick levels is 10,000 and for the x-axis the difference between the two consecutive tick levels is 100 million. I can change this, I can change this tick spacing by setting the breaks in scale y continuous and scale x continuous functions. Okay, so let's use these two functions first. Scale underscore x underscore continuous. So here we are going to supply three numbers as an argument. The first and the second number is the scale range for the axis 
Now, if we consider the x-axis, the scale range is from 0 to 300 million. We can extend it to 400 million as well. But let's say that we want the scale range to be 0 to 300 million. So 0 to 3 to the power of 3 into 10 to the power of 8. So that will give us 0 to 300 million scale for the x-axis and the third number is for the spacing between the adjacent ticks. How the spacing would be between this entire scale. Now remember for the x-axis the spacing, the current spacing between the adjacent ticks is 100 million. But in this case, let's say we want this spacing to be reduced to 50 million. So 0.5 into 10 to the power of 8. Okay. So the x-axis range will be from 0 to 300 million with a tick spacing of 50 million. Now once, once we have finished with the range of the axis and the spacing between the adjacent ticks, we need to convert these three numbers into a sequence. So let me use the sequence function. Sequence and we need to and we need to assign this sequence to the object called prex. Okay, so this will give us the so this will give us the x-axis ranging from 0 to 300 million uh, with the tick mark spacing with the tick spacing of 50 million. So similarly, we will have to use the scale for y-axis, but for y-axis we want to extend the range from 0 to 60,000 with a tick spacing of 3,000, right? So let's execute. sorry let's execute yeah now you can see that uh, for y-axis the stick spacing is changed it's now 3000 and for the x-axis also the tick spacing is changed now it is it has come down to 50 million now sometimes the tick levels these levels, the tick levels, are long and they may overlap on each other. So we can rotate the tick levels. We can do this using themes function. So let me copy this and I'm going to use themes, themes function. Now themes function is powerful it's a it's a very powerful way to customize the non-data component of your plot so you can do a lot of things with themes function for example you can change the font you can add the font color you can make it bold italics and so on so all the labels that we have seen so far the axis labels the legend labels even the title of the graph you can change the you can customize them with the help of themes function so here we will use themes and we will specify the axis tick label for x axis for x axis we want to rotate the tick labels using axis.text.x object so axis dot text dot x and we will assign the value to element text function element underscore text function and within this function we will specify the text display so we will use the angle as 30 degrees and then we will use 
we will use the position of tick labels with respect to tick marks. And then we will supply additional arguments such as vjust, which is vertical adjust as 0.5, horizontal adjust as 0.5. So this vjust and adjust arguments, they control the position of tick labels. So this label, the position of tick labels with respect to the tick mark. Okay, and we will keep both the values as 0.5. Let's execute this. So we are getting an error. This could not find the function themes. Okay, fine. So this has to be theme, not themes. So theme, and we will execute this now. It should work. Yeah. So you can see that this tick labels are now uh, changed to 30 degree orientation. Okay, moving on, we can add colors to various objects in the plot using color palette. The color brewer package, so here you will have to install the color brewer package and this package provides a number of color palettes. You can generate a graphic showing all of them using display function. So let me first load the color brewer library. Uh, color brewer so this package you will need and let me first show you how many different color palettes this package has so it should give us all the color packages available so these many color palettes I don't know whether you can see it properly I can't but you will get an idea that these many different color palettes are available in that package and the best part is you can simply call any of this any of the name of this color palette and the chart should get the the color combination which is given in that color palette okay so for our scatter plot let's let's use this dark two color palette dark two and let's let me first get this code yeah so here i'm going to change this alpha value a bit let's say let's make it as 0.8 less transparent and in order to use the color palette we will have to use the function called scale color brewer okay and as i said here we'll have to pass on the argument palette the palette name that we are going to use is dark2 dark2 is the name of the palette so this should give us the nice looking scatter plot with dark to color palette you can see the very rich color combination from this dark to palette yeah okay fine okay we have come to the end of the video now let's quickly summarize Annotations provide additional contextual information to the plot such as legend title, access title or the title of the chart and so on. Geom text automatically adds labels to the data to the chart. We also use geom text ripple function from ggripple package to rearrange the overlapping labels. While geom text function labels all the points in the data set annotate function is used to label the specific data points such as outliers so using the annotate function you will have to supply the x and y coordinates along with the text as a geometric object labs function very versatile function is extremely versatile and it can be used 
to change the axis labels, legend labels and chart title. The tick spacing for X and Y axis can be modified with the help of scale X continuous and scale Y continuous functions. Remember for the scale X and scale Y functions, you will have to supply three values. The first two values decide the range of the axis and the third value decides the distance between the two consecutive tick marks. Tick mark labels can be modified with theme function. We use theme function to change the orientation of x-axis tick mark label. And finally, we saw the various colors, palette. And finally, we saw various colors can be added to the chart using our color brewer package. Our color brewer package has listed down various color palettes you are, you simply have to call the color palette you simply have to call the color palette name in order to use those color combination in your data visualization fine so we have come to the end of the video thanks for watching it till end if you have any suggestions, comments, please write them in comment section. Your inputs are very, very valuable and will massively help me in improving this content further. If you want to get notified on all my upcoming videos, please also do subscribe to this channel. Thanks for watching. I will see you soon.